Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Faraj Kamran and you are watching Explore Chemistry. Today in this video I am going to give you some basic information about organic compounds. As well as you will study some characteristics and uses of organic compounds. So let's start. First of all I will give you introduction of organic compounds. Organic compounds are actually carbon containing compounds known as hydrocarbons. In this, uh, these structures, you can see they are the compounds made up of hydrogen and carbon. As the name indicates, hydrocarbons means something made up of hydrogen and carbon. So, hydrogen and carbon are the main elements of organic compounds. And study of these hydrocarbons and their derivatives is known as organic chemistry. Derivatives are the compounds made from hydrocarbons and their study is known as organic chemistry. Now I'll tell you some history of this organic chemistry. This branch of chemistry was first defined as a branch of modern science in the early 1800th century by John Jacob Berzelius. He classified chemical compounds into two main groups. First one was organic compounds, those compounds which are obtained from dead animals and plants. And other branch of compounds were inorganic compounds which are obtained from mainly minerals or non-living matter. So it was thought that organic compounds can be made from dead animals and plants only or by the nature. This was a theory which says, vital force theory, it says organic compounds must have their origin in living organism and consequently could never be synthesized from inorganic material because organic compounds are formed from dead and organisms of animals and plants when these dead organisms buried under the ground due to the heat and pressure and some bacterial effect, these dead animals and plants convert into fossil fuel or organic compounds. So, it was thought that organic compounds could not be made in a lab but needed a mysterious God-given power. Synthesis of organic compounds requires a vital force. So, this was the concept that organic compounds cannot be prepared by men. It can be only prepared by God. But, the scientist Wuller formed urea for the first time in his lab. In 1828, he dispelled the vital force theory and created an organic compound that is urea in his laboratory. In one of his experiments, he discovered that urea, which is an organic compound, could be made by heating ammonium cyanate, which is an inorganic compound. In an experiment, he was trying to obtain solid ammonium cyanate from aqueous ammonium cyanate by heating. But on heating this compound, inorganic compound ammonium cyanate, he has formed solid urea which is an organic compound. So for the first time any organic compound has been prepared in the laboratory. After that, every year millions of organic compounds are preparing in the laboratory. Now we are going to discuss some characteristics of organic compounds. First one is composition of organic compounds. Organic compounds are carbon containing compounds as I have told you earlier. They mainly contain carbon bonded with hydrogen. Therefore they are called as hydrocarbons. They may also contain some other elements like oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus etc. And they will be called as derivative of hydrocarbons. Like in this structure, you can see this is simple hydrocarbon containing carbon and hydrogen. This is the structure of methane. And these two structures are derivatives of hydrocarbons which are containing oxygen and nitrogen also in their structures. Next property of organic compound is of chemical bonding. Organic compounds contain covalent bond that may be polar covalent bond or non-polar covalent bond. As you all know, covalent bond is formed by mutual sharing of bonded electrons. 
every atom gives one electron for sharing and a mutual sharing of a pair of electrons takes place over here. Simple hydrocarbons usually contain non-polar covalent bond. Like here you can see in the structure of methane, it is non-polar covalent bond because of unequal sharing of bonded electrons between carbon and hydrogen. Because electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is less than 0.4, so non-polar covalent bond is formed. On the other hand, this is the structure of water which shows polar covalent bond. Here also you can see there are charges on oxygen, there is partial negative sign, on hydrogen atoms there are partial positive sign. These signs are due to unequal sharing of bonded electrons between oxygen and hydrogen. This occurs because the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen is greater than 0.4 and less than 1.7. So a polar covalent bond is formed. So mostly organic compounds are non-polar covalent. Uh, they contain non-polar covalent bond or they are non-polar in nature. Next property of organic compound is the intermolecular forces. Or, or, organic compounds are having generally weak intermolecular forces due to their non-polar covalent bond. Here in this picture you can see the force of attraction between two molecules is known as intermolecular force. And the force of attraction between two elements, two atoms is known as chemical bond. So intermolecular forces are force of attraction between two molecules due to, due to, the, uh, due to, we, uh, due to which these two molecules are attached together. Now organic compounds show we intermolecular forces because of the presence of non-polar polar covalent bond. There are no charges on each carbon and hydrogen, no partial positive negative charges. So molecules cannot be attracted towards each other. Other property is Physical state. This property is also dependent on weak intermolecular forces of organic compounds. Organic compounds normally exist in liquid or gaseous state or sometimes exist as low melting point solids. Due to weak intermolecular forces, because there is no attraction between molecules, so their molecules stay apart from each other and gives physical state as solid or gases. Next property of organic compound is their melting and boiling points. Organic compounds have low melting and boiling points due to weak intermolecular forces. Because molecules are not attached with each other, so their intermolecular forces are easily breakable by providing low amount of heat. Therefore, mostly organic compounds are volatile in nature. Volatile substances are those substances which can evaporate at room temperature, for example, perfumes, petrol, and thinner also. Next property is stability. Because they are volatile in nature, so most of the organic compounds are less stable due to their less melting and boiling point values. So if you will keep any organic compounds bottle open, they will evaporate at room temperature. Next property of organic compound is the solubility. Organic compounds are generally insoluble in water due to their non-polar nature. But they are soluble in non-polar solvents like alcohol, ether and benzene according to like dissolves like rule. Like dissolves like rule says that polar solutes can be soluble in polar solvents only. Whereas no, organic compounds are non-polar in nature. For example, oil. You can see oil is insoluble in water. Water is polar in nature. Oil is non-polar in nature. So, oil cannot dissolve in water according to like dissolves like rule. But oil can be dissolved in alcohol, ether, benzene, carbon tetrachloride, etc. Because all these solvents are non-polar in nature. Next property of organic compound is their electrical conductivity. They are poor conductors of electricity or they are non-conductors due to the presence of covalent bond and absence of charges or ions. 
This is an example of non-electrolyte which shows no conductivity. This is ethanol. Here in the solution you can see there are no ions present in ethanol. So electricity cannot be conducted between these two electrodes. Another example is of weak electrolyte. It is acetic acid solution. Here you can see small amount of ions are present. So they show low conductivity and considered as weak electrolyte. So organic compounds can be either non-electrolyte or weak electrolyte. They may show no conductivity or weak conductivity. This is the example of inorganic compound potassium chloride which is an which is a strong electrolyte because of the presence of maximum ions here in the solution you can see no molecule is present every molecule has broken up into ions so it shows maximum conductivity so organic compounds are either non electrolytes or weak electrolytes due to the absence of ions and due to the presence of non polar covalent bond Next property is the flammability and combustibility. Organic compounds can burn or ignite easily causing fire. They can undergo a combustion reaction easily producing a good amount of energy. This equation is showing the combustion reaction of methane. Methane is a natural gas which we use, we use in our kitchens as fuel. Whenever organic compounds burn in the presence of oxygen it produces carbon dioxide water and large amount of energy this is known as combustion reaction or burning reaction this energy is useful this energy can be utilized to cook food in case of methane or it can be also used to move our vehicles Therefore, organic compounds can be used as fuel. In engines, the burning reaction or combustion reaction of fuel or petrol takes place which produces large amount of energy. This energy is used to move vehicles. Next property of organic compound is the rate of chemical reaction. Organic compounds can undergo slow and complex chemical reaction due to the presence of covalent bond. If there will be charges in the bond, that compound can react with another compound very easily. But in case of known polar covalent compounds, there are no charges present. So their reactions are very slow. And sometimes their reactions require specific conditions such as temperature, pressure and catalyst. As you know, organic compounds are formed naturally inside the earth's surface after hundreds of years. Their formation is also very slow. It requires temperature and pressure condition of earth's surface and bacterial effect as catalyst. So their reactions are also very slow. Now we are going to discuss some uses of organic compounds. Organic compounds have various uses in our daily lives. They are present almost everywhere because thousands of organic compounds are formed naturally by animals and plants and millions of organic compounds are synthesized in the laboratory every year. So you can find organic compounds around yourself everywhere. For example, organic compounds uses as fuel. The fuel we use are called fossil fuels and they are either coal, petroleum or natural gas. All these are organic compounds. So whatever fuel we use it is an organic compound. Next use is it can be used as food. Food we eat in our daily life contains carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, and these are all organic compounds. So whatever we eat is an organic compound. Next uses, it can be used as clothing. All type of clothing are made up of either natural fibers like cotton, silk and wool or synthetic fibers like nylon, dacron and acrylic. And all these compounds are organic in nature. So whatever we wear is an organic compound. 
Organic compounds can be used as medicines also. Many organic compounds as, uh, are used as medicines which can be synthesized naturally by plants or they can be synthesized in laboratory also. These organic compounds are sometimes life-saving medicines or sometimes drugs like antibiotics. Organic compounds can also be used as raw material. These are used to prepare variety of different materials like rubber, paper, ink, drugs, dyes, paints, pesticides and important chemicals. As you all know, raw materials are input of any industry. So, organic compounds can be used to prepare some useful products. Next uses, it can be used as furniture. Furniture made up of wood means it is made up of organic compounds. Wood is cellulose, which is an important naturally synthesized organic compound. So, all kind of furniture made up of wood in our house is actually an organic compound. Now it's time for some homework. Justify the following statements means you have to give reasons of these statements. Number one, organic compounds are insoluble in water. Number two, hydrocarbons are known as organic compounds. Number three, whatever we eat is an organic compound. Number four, organic compounds can be used as fuel. Number 5, organic compounds are non-electrolytes. And number 6, organic compounds are having low melting and boiling point. You have to give reasons of these statements. Hope you understood everything and liked my video. If you liked it, please share with your friends and subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.